The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. <laughs> What's the matter, Ben? Why are you so sad? 20 years ago, I made some really cool Doom levels, but now they're trapped on this ancient, obsolete zip disk. I want to see these levels. We need a zip drive. And a computer with a parallel port, which could be even harder to find. No, I know where we can get a computer with a parallel port. Oh, okay. Hey, and we should look at the signals on the parallel port being sent to the zip drive using an oscilloscope. Might be interesting. Yeah, I'd like to see that. All right, let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Felix, you have an old Dell computer here. Yeah, I got this old Dell computer that I found from the Badre, a local hackerspace, makerspace type thing. And, and uh, they just threw it away? It was in the recycle this pile. Does it work? I don't know, I haven't turned it on. Well, I think the main thing we're looking for here is a parallel ding, port. Ding, ding. Hmm. Is the DVD-ROM, uh, is that serial or parallel? parallel oh, or it's, uh, no, it's serial, serial. okay. Um, there isn't a hard drive in here, Felix. Well, I guess we'll have to find one from somewhere. <laughs> Are we gonna install an operating system on it? Maybe. Do we have to? Do we want to? How do we want to do it? Well, we want to see data going to the zip drive. I mean, it w it'd be nice if there's an operating system. I want to sniff the USB port as data is being transferred so we can figure out what's oh, going on. Okay. Like we can make a really small file and transfer it to the zip drive mm -hmm. and then back and forth and see what kind of protocols go across it. Yep, putting this hard drive in here. It's really standard kind of a thing. It's, oh, okay, I see it's got these pins here. Hey, where'd the SATA cables go? Oh, I probably just like threw them around. Oh, it's got five SATA ports. Wow, we can hook up a RAID array. Oh, that's redundant. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yeah, this is uh, ancient archeology. span Oh, I didn't, I didn't, uh, let's go to the setup mode. Ancient archeology? span Isn't that kind of redundant? Get off my case. Shut up. <laughs> we don't even oh, need to do you probably need to activate the SATA, don't you? Oh, for the yeah, for the yeah. uh, CD ROM. <clears throat> that is so weird. Active I've never seen that before. Now you have to reboot. The Linux system. I know this. Maybe we should replace the battery. I keep thinking that when I, every time I look over there. I I did buy a bunch <laughs> of those batteries. You know what? I'm gonna go get one. Should they really make these batteries look like pills? I mean, kids might start eating them like Tide Pods. Yep, at the, the uh, battery eating challenge. <laughs> <laughs> professional battery eaters. <laughs> Felix, you should become one of those professional eaters. You're pretty skinny. <laughs> it's usually the skinny people that win. I used to be skinny. I'm just kind of turned into a glob. Oh, brother. We need a more clever name than this. What do I call it? Oh, Zippy. How's that spelled? Z-I-P-P-Y. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need a super secret password. <sighs> do we? How about no password? Yeah, I can't have an empty password. <sighs> okay, uh, zip. Oh, drive. Zip and drive. Oh. That's almost as good as raspberry and pie. <laughs> oh. Let's just use this weak password. Yeah. This is kind of like Oregon Trail. Oh. It's like, do you really want to have people? Let's encrypt the home directory. No! <laughs> this is not like an NSA computer. <laughs> This computer only has one job. Actually, what we could, the, we could yeah. like, you could make this into like a media PC and you could do all sorts of stuff. Hey, we got the operating system installed in here. We're gonna just look at it for a little bit, then power it down and put in the battery, connect the power for the floppy, floppy drive. drive. And then we're gonna move it over to the other bench and we're gonna make a little bus analyzer and we're gonna analyze the parallel port. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the male and female um, parallel headers that we pulled off of the old zip drive, and I'm making them into a null end connector. Basically, we'll use this as a pass-through that we can get signals from. 
That way we don't have to chop up an old cable. So we'll have it coming in from the computer here and then we'll plug this into the uh, zip drive itself. So we're kind of making a bus pirate in a way. Yeah, unfortunately this isn't exactly 0.1 inch pitch. I'm just going to attach it as well as I can to this and then I'll just have to make a bunch of uh, crossover connections using this pinout. All right, I've made the null printer adapter. Basically just copied everything over. It was important to remember that it's actually mirrored, so you do a straight shot. So on this one, the female one, pin one is over here on the right, but on the male, pin one is on the left, which makes sense because they made up to each other. So basically just passing the data through like this. Then I added test points for the 8-bit data bus all of the select signals, strobe, and then I added a bunch of ground pins so we can easily hook up the oscilloscope. Hey, what's going on there? We're back at uh, the bench here with the data bus analyzation. Tell me, what, tell me what you figured out so far. I did a capture of the scope here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one. it looks like a bunch of commands, but one thing that stands out is this one here at the end. See that? Because I, I think that it's using a couple of the lines as like a clock pulse. See that? Where? So I think what's happening is you've got a high on air, a low on line feed, and then a busy. So I think mm -hmm. it's like it's sending the data over and then that thing is responding. Although it might be putting it into like an internal buffer of some kind. I don't know why it's that many characters. Although actually it could be the, um, the file format. You know, it's having to write the name of the file and the data in the file itself. Uh, but anyway, the, th the thing that I noticed was right here, see we have all these null pulses. And I'm wondering if that's it filling up a sector. Because, you know, mm -hmm. you can only access one sector at a time on a disk. And if you look at it, you've got a whole bunch of zeros and a ton of pulses. Maybe we should look up how the SCSI interface works. Felix, I was reading about SCSI, the Small Computer Serial Interface or Small Computer System Interface. Tell me more. Okay, yes. It is eight bits wide, but the okay. bits are being sent in a serial fashion. All right. I don't know why. And it's parallel. Right. Yes. Let's try that. So if we want to think about it, we're thinking about reading it vertically, you know, like this. Okay. But really, I think the bytes are going to be like that. Okay. Horizontal. So it's like eight serial lines at once. All right. So even though, basically it's using the parallel port as eight serial lines <laughs> instead of one parallel line. Is there a way we can just create a file? We can just create a file with hex, like a hex file in Linux? Uh, we could uh, make a hex editor. Let's do that. That way we can put in bit patterns. That'll be really easy to recognize on the scope. All right, go ahead and paste file text to the zip drive. Isn't, it, isn't this the zip drive? No, this is not the no, zip drive. No, that's the computer's files. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. File, uh, text. No, no, file text. Oh, it's capital. Is it capital? Yes, I did that on purpose. Okay. It's over, it's this window right there. All right. Where are you, data? There you are. Hey Felix, look at this. Let's show me what you got. So show us what you got. See those pulses, like the uh, the busy pulse where it goes high, which basically means it's not busy. I'm gonna put the cursor right at the beginning of this um, error line feed pulse, which I believe is like a clock pulse. Mm -hmm. 4.5 microseconds of distance. So <laughs> for some reason we need we need to update this scope because we actually don't have a pulse counter. So we're gonna have to just kind of dead reckon it. So hmm. that whole thing is uh, 2.156 milliseconds. You know how a file system can only do one sector at a time? Okay. So 2.156 milliseconds is 2,156 microseconds divided by four microseconds, 4.5, 479. Hmm. That's pretty close to 512. Actually, let's try to get a little closer. Get a little bit closer, you my kind of scope. Let's go to edge to edge, 4.22. 2135 divided by 4.2. Yeah, that's very close. Mm -hmm. 508, so yeah, that's looking like a full sector right. Any disk device, the smallest amount of space you can change is one sector. So even if you only want to change the first eight bytes of a sector, like our character pattern, you still have to write the whole sector. So you'd have to read it in and then write it back okay. to make sure everything's still there. So even though it's, it's doing it in serial, not parallel, it would still need the same number of pulses because in the end, you know, you'd have to pulse it eight times times 64 or once times 512. So after I loaded the module, 
we were able to plug in the zip drive to the parallel port and just like that, voila, we were able to read the zip drive. It just showed up right in our file browser. So what we were trying to do, we started sniffing the signals. One thing I thought, hey, we might be able to figure out more if we look at the source code for the module. So that PPA module, and when I found the source code for that on Linus Torvald's Linux GitHub page, so we got that pulled up right here. Um, here is the C file. There's actually a C and a header file here. Um, this is everything that we need in order to read and write to the zip drive here. Felix, we were able to get my old custom Doom maps off of a zip drive. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I made it based off a place I used to work, which was a restaurant. Yeah, so this is, um, this is the downstairs hallway. This is where you start. And then back here, there's like a secret room. So this is where the boss used to like hang out and like sleep when he was hung over. So you see it's all, all dark and filled with garbage. Yeah. Like dead caco demons. Uh -huh. That represents the garbage in his Floating room. round heads. Apparently Who's something just shot me. I don't know. Oh, oh there's God, like a, a there's like a pinky. Does he have a brain? <laughs> I'm Duke I remember Nuka. the first time I was playing this, I used to get confused as to why the... the <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is the bar, the downstairs bar. See how it's got kind of a, yeah. a curvature, although obviously it's not really a curve. <clears throat> and you're not downstairs. Uh, there's a secret thing back here. There's like a walk-in cooler back here with some ammo. Oh, there's a key card. You, need you just that. didn't line up your texture. Oh no! Oh, I blew myself up. I'm just gonna run to the end, although all the monsters will chase me. But here's the banquet hall area. See that, that's a dance floor. And then like, there's like a window to outside or something? Or yeah, like yeah. That would be like the rear parking lot. Actually, one of my friends had their wedding reception in this building. So next time I go to Richmond Center, I'll, I'll know. Oh yeah, I'll know yeah. I don't know where you, to go. Yeah, this, this is a pretty accurate map. So back here is the kitchen. I don't think I have the key card for it yet, though. Mm, 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 no. I am Duke Nukem, and I'm going to say lines of dialogue from Army of Darkness. That's all we have for today, but I'm glad we were able to get this old zip drive working to recover my old Doom discs. And it was fun looking at the bus signals going to the zip drive to kind of see how this old technology worked. Do you have experience reverse engineering old hardware, or new hardware even? Tell us your computer stories from the 90s on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. Hey, now we should play quick. Oh yeah. Academy Award winner, the guy who tells him to make a rudimentary lathe. Now this would confuse Indiana Jones. <laughs> Some sort of ancient Sumerian plate. Yeehaw, I'm gonna lasso me a computer. Yeehaw, but y'all. Who's, who says that? He all but John. We have top men working on it right now. Felix, what's this big ginormous console? It's my first game console. Oh, the Atari 5200. Mm -hmm. Didn't this thing have really awful controllers? They were so terrible, I had to stop playing it because they are just miserable. You know, Felix, we have some experience with gaming controllers. Mm -hmm. I bet we could build a better one. When we launch our console, it will blot out the sun.